We're here for. Where, where do you think you want your audience to take away from when they see the first episode? We want them to be compelled by the mystery. Uh, we want them to be engaged by the character. Uh, one of the great gifts that Owen gave all of the writers in the writers room of the Messenger is, is that um, these are all characters that, in one way, shape, or form, or another, we can relate to. Um, yes, they come from different ages and different walks of life. Uh, yes, they have different belief systems, which we will explore uh, uh, to a much greater depth uh, in series. But, you know, they're all facing very real, very relevant, very relatable crises in their lives. Not dissimilar from the kinds of crises we all face in our lives. Uh, and so this show is always going to be a tug of war between how do I be just my own human self? How do I deal with my own human problems now that I have a new destiny thrust upon my shoulders? Wings, if you prefer. <laughs> uh, um, and and how, how, how do I reconcile the two? How do I, how do I find a, a greater a sense of meaning in my own life, a greater purpose in my own life, get beyond my own problems? by uh, connecting with a group of complete strangers and being told that I now share a common destiny with these people that is all about saving humankind as we know it. So it's any one of us who are having a tough day <laughs> and then you say you're suddenly informed, you thought that was bad, wait till you see what you got to do next. And what's interesting about that is that you still have all of the problems that you were burdened with before, yeah. you know, you still have maybe a abusive ex-husband pursuing you, or you still might have, uh, you know, a, a sense of a cartel coming up or something like this, you know, you still have all of these problems. And some have gotten worse. And Peter is actually worse. responsible for a murder now. That yeah. doesn't just go away. It might go away in normal TV terms, not in the messenger's terms. Now, now that's something else to carry. Let me ask you a question. They have, uh, we're seeing a rise of interest in this whole Angels. Like, Lifetime's got Damien coming yeah. up about the Antichrist. Oh, Dominion's yeah. on the Sci Fi Channel. We have Messengers now. Yes. What is it? I mean, what is the appeal that suddenly people are like creating a look at him? He's all ready to go. What is the appeal to you? I think it's a fascinating question. It's one of the first things I thought about when I read the pilot. I, you know, I think it's cyclical. Uh, I think many times over the millennia, humankind have convinced themselves the end is near. Okay? Uh, whenever things start looking particularly bad. So any one of us, and we've all been you know, inundated with it, can flip on the 24-hour news cycle now. Arguably now more than ever, we're all tapped into everything bad happening in the world. And so what happens during those periods is that people start to lose hope. They get afraid and they start to feel hopeless. And you know, he knows I'm a sap, I own it up front. Uh, uh, but what I will tell you is, one of the great victories of our show so far that I think we're most proud of is, yes, we do deal in this biblical mythology, an end day scenario from the Christian Bible known as the Book of Revelations. But there's a common thread in each one of our episodes so far, which is there's at least one moment, sometimes more, that yank your heart out of your chest and make you feel hope. Uh, and you know, there's a there's a moment. You're so tired of me hearing me tell this, but there's a there's a there there was a moment early on because our writers. It was like the greatest theological seminar any of us have ever been to. We all came at it from different perspectives and different belief systems. So some great discussions and debates that are very reflected in the characters of the drama. But on the first day of the writers' room, I asked everybody to bring a picture of someone that meant the most to them. Could be your pet, could be your grandmother, your spouse, your kids, whoever. In part, it was to cover up an ugly pillar in the corner of the writer's room that we didn't like, but it was mostly there because uh, at the end of the day, the only reason these apocalyptic stories, whatever form they take from whatever sacred text or whatever religion, whether you believe in them or not, the only reason they matter really is because they represent a loss of the people that we love the most. They represent a loss of the people that we hold most dear. And so each time as we explored the mythology and the different ways we could dramatize it for television, those pictures kept us honest because you would always find yourself going, yeah, but what about grandma? And what about my dog? <laughs> you know, and, and so it's really, really, I think, very powerful from a very character-driven standpoint. That's where most of the hope in the humanity comes from. Yes, they're angels of the apocalypse. Yes, they have these gifts from a higher power. But each of those gifts represent a weakness within them. It's as if someone were able to look down into each one of us and say, you know what your problem is, and now I'm going to give you a gift. And there's a learning curve to it, and it's going to be indispensable in helping you potentially work with these other people to stop the beginning of the end, but guess what? It's also going to be instrumental in helping you solve something deep within you that might be broken.
Well, since you've introduced the messengers, are you going to introduce something like the equivalent of the, um, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Absolutely. <laughs> when do those come in? Absolutely. And they become they come in much sooner than later. And, uh, and what's interesting about them is, like Owen said, you know, they also are normal human beings. And they also have their own paths uh, toward destiny. And most importantly, they have choices to make just like the messengers do. And so it's really important for us to, that was one of the key points in interpreting this material, is the book of Revelation is so colorful, it's so poetic, it's so rich in metaphor, it can be so dark. Uh, But what was so important for us was to find a way to sort of <clears throat> empower people, you know. No matter what you believe in, most people are familiar with the with the the biblical story of Noah and and God sort of being, you know, very disappointed in humankind and saying, "That's it. I'm going to flood the world for 40 days and 40 nights, and then we're going to start all over again." Our interpretation of the Book of Revelation through the messengers, it's almost as if that higher power is saying, once again, I see CNN and Fox News just like the rest of you. I get a much better vantage point of it. I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm very disappointed once again, but I'm going to give you choices this time. I'm going to give you tools for your salvation or your destruction. You pick. So how did, how did you pick what to take out of the Book of Revelation? Because I'm going to assume there's the four horsemen and probably the tops of some kinds of seals, and maybe there being seven of them. But like you know, I, I don't know. I've never seen a show that it takes the taking of a third of the stars out of the sky and throwing them to Earth and then dragons. Like, but, <laughs> well, we have a great visual effects team. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you, how did you yeah. decide what to take out? I mean, That's one of our favorite parts. Is. It's it's interpretive, you know, so that you know. Uh, when we first went into the CW, who've been incredible from the beginning, and I can't imagine a greater level of creative sync with a network on a first season show where there's so many chefs stirring the pot. Um, when we first went in to pitch our vision for, here's what, okay, everyone agrees, we love the pilot. Yeah. Now, here's what we want to do next. We went in with not just, here's what we want to do in season one, here's what the first seven seasons are. To the point where they had to go, whoa, 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 slow down. Can we go back to season one for a second? Um, but it's it's interpretive. It's, it's going through those very colorful, those very rich, those very powerful and emotional texts and finding ways to interpret them in very human, very modern day, very relevant terms. So that you may or may not, first of all, there is no prerequisite for knowing the book of Revelation in order to watch the messengers or any other sacred text. But if you know it, then you will also have the benefit of recognizing certain aspects of our drama that will be reflections or interpretations of what, are, what, what appears in the book of Revelation. And this is also where we're starting our story and it might continue on into, into you know, other parts. That's right. That's right. I, I have a question. Um, I kind of look at it like the way the messengers were chosen. Like a lot of times, Christians forget that when Jesus was chosen, his disciples, you know, they weren't saintly people. Right. And I, I find that interesting with the messengers that they all come from from different backgrounds, different beliefs, and all that. How did it go? Just the idea of of putting that together, choosing like what their backgrounds were in order to to be the messengers and carry this message from God. It's a great question. I mean, I think Owen and I were both drawn, and I know you were drawn to this in the pilot, the whole notion of a reluctant prophet. Uh, there's few few more satisfying character portrayals than someone who has this destiny thrust in front of them and has to push back against it. And I don't, I, I don't have time to save the world right now. I'm trying to save my kid. I'm trying to save my reputation. I'm trying to clear my name. You know, and and yet you're now telling me I gotta save the world. I'm either not okay with that, or some embrace it, but then don't fully understand what they're embracing. You know, it's a really fascinating character dynamic to play with. Um, they it, all come at it from different directions. You know, each of them has their own reasons for not wanting to go forward or wanting to go forward too much and ignoring things that they should be focusing on. That's right. That's right. Is there a, is there a clear de facto leader? I, I, I've gotten the impression from a couple of actors. A power they're, the, they're the leader. Well, they're kind of the leader. It's like, well, isn't that the way humankind works? I was Everybody that. wants to think they're in charge. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting because, uh, again, to bring up Anna Joe, who's so supremely talented, uh, I, I just every time I watch the pilot, I feel like 
uh, God, what a waste. Would she wake up already? Um, she's, uh, but once she does awaken uh, in episode two, she has a very unique gift, which is very instrumental in A, informing the others of their destiny, and then B, hopefully ultimately helping convince them of the various reasons they should work together. Leader, mm. but there's a way you know. There's a way that a lot, lot of them take on the mantle of leader. That's exactly right. In the story, depending on where they are in their own personal lives, like if someone is dealing with, you know, cops coming after them or something like that, they're not going to be the leader in that episode. They're going to be the one who needs to be led. So let me put it this way: to be a messenger is to be a part of a team sport. Okay, and uh, there, there will be rotating captains. Yeah, the, the, I wanted to ask that. Um, so, given that the show has a like a five-person dynamic, how much of it is going to be um, this episode is this person's episode, or is it going to be everyone's evolving a little bit equally every episode, or is it going to be the the gangs all here this episode, we're all doing something together? How's, how's that going? Right it's definitely an ensemble. They definitely have collective mission that, like I said, they they, they have to work together uh, to try and accomplish, but. By its own definition and its own complexity, it's going to force them apart at different times. Some will have to work together that may not prefer to work together. Uh, some will work together and fall in love in the process. Some will find themselves off on an individual quest to be a part of that greater whole. Uh, it's one of the great blessings, uh, every pun intended, of having uh, such a talented group of performers that we, at any point, you know, we always felt a great comfort level in being able to turn to Chantel for this episode, or John for this episode, or JD for that episode, or, or you know, let's take Sophia and then uh, let's either leave her with her daughter uh, or let's take her daughter away and see what that means to her. You know, it's, it's really been tremendously rewarding to have such a talented uh, ensemble of actors to work with in that regard. What was the spark? I mean, obviously the book of Revelations, but in, cre in the show being created in the first place, so what triggered it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it's, it's complicated because I think it was like my entire upbringing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I could say that. But, you know, I, I grew up in Arkansas where there, you know, there, there are all sorts of kind of religious... Uh, uh, undertones to, to everything and I grew up Catholic and that was different than what a lot of people were so I was thinking a lot about like the differences between religions um, and then I also was very interested in science and thinking about ways that like how does you know the story of you know, physics story of the universe how does that correspond to these things so you know I think it was trying to come up with a, an idea that you'd able, do, be able to bring together a lot of different perspectives all at once and so that was where the insult of nature was born and that's where these, this idea of angels are born the seven angels. Then he got stuck with a showrunner who was raised Presbyterian, whose mother's a minister, but converted to Judaism 20 years ago. So, like I said, we're coming at this from all kinds of places, um, but really character first, and humanity first, and hope. Uh, so. What's the significance of Houston? Why are they, I mean, they're all Well, he's from Arkansas, I'm from Oklahoma, it had to be Texas, <laughs> you know. We didn't, we didn't want to put our own loved ones in any jeopardy. So it had to be Houston. No, no. Houston seemed like a great central part, literally, in the country, part of the heartland. Um, uh, there's a huge number of not just churches, but various religious uh, groups in Houston. Uh, and, and some of it also has to do with, uh, uh, with Rose and the fact that, you know, she is there at Houston Memorial Hospital. And you know, like Houston has so many different things. It has NASA, it has megachurches, it has yeah. oil, it has all of these things, and it just seems to... So it's representative of a lot of what we talk about. I'm kind of interested, like, going into the, the writer's room, you said, you know, so many different beliefs. Like, what the, was one of the things you first told them, like, okay, if, you, if you're not familiar with the book of Revelation, find the Bible and, and read it so you can get an understanding of where we're coming from? No, or I mean, look. Did you just go by, you know, people's beliefs? Any good writer's going to do their homework. Right and 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 is going to read it. It was it certainly wasn't mandatory reading. Uh, you know the, the writers were all chosen because they all had incredibly strong skill sets at developing character or following genre or you know uh, 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 you know serialized drama. You put together a writers' room from a lot of different influences. But we did talk at great length about you know 
where people stood spiritually. Uh, and we always honored and respected and, and in the same way our show is never designed to offend anyone's religious sensitivities, uh, we, we do want to try and challenge your thoughts and your beliefs a little bit, if only to strengthen them in different ways, um, but also to make you more aware of other people's viewpoints and, and more perhaps ideally tolerant of other people's belief systems. So the writer's room was absolutely reflective of that. You know, it's, it's, uh, we, we surrounded ourselves also not just with, you know, the book of Revelation, but all kinds of imagery around the writer's room, again, that was reflective of different end day apocalyptic scenarios for different religions, including, you know, you know, supernova pictures or whatever it was, you know, it was, it was always about, uh, uh, you know, kicking the tires from every different angle and, and really examining, or I'm sorry, examining what, what, what are the common points, you know, um, we, we say, uh, one of our characters says at one point this season, uh, <laughs> We're all on our way to Disneyland. We're just taking different exits to get there, and 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 that is that was an approach that was really important for us throughout the series. Okay, thank you. Thank you.